So Pluto just entered Aquarius last Saturday, and there are a lot of implications at the collective and individual level. So you've probably heard a lot of astrologers and astrology enthusiasts talking about Pluto in Aquarius and making a really big deal about it. Well, it is because it is a big deal. Pluto hasn't been in Aquarius in like 246 years. The last time it was in this sign was during like the American Revolutionary Period for all my US listeners. So for those of us in the United States, this is a very, very big deal. This is a pivotal time in history because from 1778 to 1798, that was the last time Pluto was in Aquarius. There was a lot of rebellion. It was lots of revolutionary things happening, the building of America. And I actually looked up kind of the key events of 1778 to 1798. Um, and there's like so much happened. A lot of um, different parts of our government were established. Um, the U.S. government itself is established under a new constitution. Uh, the French Revolution begins. I, I mean, there's just so much that is happening during this time. It really is the beginning stages of America. And this is coming back around and history doesn't repeat itself, but it does rhyme. And I think we all have felt this energy of kind of big changes coming to us in the US and really globally as well. So let me break it down. Pluto is the planet of death, rebirth, transformation, hidden truths, deep healing that we need to do. It's about resources. It's about power. It's about wealth. And Aquarius is a sign related to technology, innovation, revolution, rebellion, challenging the status quo, leaning into your uniqueness. Um, it's about caring about the collective. It is a sign for the people. So we have a planet that is very transformative, kind of breaks things down. And then we have it in a sign that is very revolutionary and wants to change things, very future oriented. And what it begs of us to ask ourselves and to start to create more change in the structures and how we live is how we, how can we be more free? How can we be more liberated in our minds, with our bodies, um, like how we live, how we work? There's just so much happening. And because of globalization, because of technology, information is moving so quickly around the world. It's like instantaneous. So we are again experiencing a very revolutionary time in the United States, but really this is affecting all of us around the world. We are starting to see what needs to be changed. So when Pluto was in um, Capricorn, we realized what was wrong with capitalism. Oh, like it's just the few that are really benefiting, amassing a lot of wealth. and. Now we've kind of seen all these different things, um, what corporations are doing, um, you know, what's wrong, what's right, and starting to take all these insights, this information, these realizations, and creating change these next 20 years. Now, I'm not going to say like every single day is going to be very dramatic, um, but honestly, with the news cycle and how the news operates, it's already pretty sensationalist and dramatic. So uh, it may not feel th that different because they're always kind of making a big deal about s something. And we've already experienced some of this energy with Saturn in Aquarius. Um, Saturn's Aquarius, it just ended last uh, March of 2023 after being in that sign for three years, um, really 
asking ourselves to understand like, you know, what needs more structure, what needs to change. So you can think about during the time of the pandemic, we all experienced um, even more technology in our lives, friendships changing or j- dreams shifting and, you know, understanding like more of a, a like a, like a, uh, a work life balance as well. And also understand like, Hey, I actually really want to work from home. <laughs> so think about some of the things that, uh, you experienced, you explored during Saturn in Aquarius. that can give you an idea of what's to come with Pluto in Aquarius. With Pluto in Aquarius, we are going to spend, you know, a lot more time the next 20 years thinking about what needs to be changed and changing those things too. Because Saturn in Aquarius is a couple years versus Pluto in Aquarius is for 20 years, I feel like the intensity is going to be a bit different and it's definitely going to be more of like a, a, a marathon and it's not going to be up and down every single day, but kind of just in the background. And at the collective level, we're really thinking again about um, what does it mean to be free, to be liberated? What does it mean to really care for one another? And how can we dream of a better future for all and start to make that a reality? Technology is going to be changing our lives even more and being integrated into our lives in ways that we cannot even imagine in good ways and bad ways. And when we are thinking about stuff at the individual level, there's a lot of transformation that can happen. So uh, you want to go to your free career astrology report. And if you haven't gotten it, go to yoursaturn.com to generate your free report. And then go to the third page, which has uh, your birth chart, that wheel, that circle, and look for the sign of Aquarius. And that's going to be two squiggly lines stacked on top of one another. And you're going to see it at the start of a house. There are 12 houses, 12 pieces of the pie on your birth chart. And look for where the two squiggly lines are. And that's going to be the focus area for you where a lot of change and transformation is going to happen. So you are going to kind of burn everything down to some degree and that part of your life and build things up again to make things even better for yourself. So I will give the example of anyone who is a Capricorn rising because your second house is going to be in Aquarius. Now I use the Plastis system of reading birth charts, interpreting birth charts. And you might have, you know, a bit of um, like Capricorn and Aquarius, maybe just Aquarius or Aquarius and Pisces, or maybe Capricorn, uh, Aquarius and Pisces. Uh, Because with Placidus, you can have uh, uh, one house have multiple signs in it, but we're going to make it easy. And we're just going to talk about um, the second house being in Aquarius. So for my Capricorn risings, this means that you will go through a lot of transformation when it comes to your money mindset, how you view money, your relationship with money and self-worth, as well as how you use your resources. So you're getting major, major upgrades when it comes to all things related to money. There'll be a desire to increase your financial literacy and to make sure that you feel more empowered when it comes to money. And yeah, just tons of changes coming in that way. So now I'm going to move on to sun, moon, rising, and north node. So this is Uh, These are some very important placements because Pluto's in Aquarius, it's going to really affect my sun, my moon, my rising, and my north node friends, as well as anyone who has a lot of Aquarius in your chart. So if you see the word Aquarius or the number 11 more than three times in your chart properties in your free career astrology report, that means that Aquarius has a stronger influence for you. And so this Pluto in Aquarius is going to be activating those areas of your chart of your life. So for my Aquarius sons, happy birthday, happy early birthday. This Aquarius season is going to be 
more transformative at times, maybe more triggering than others because we have Pluto in Aquarius. You're going to really start to wonder and think like, what do I want to create in my life? What dreams do I have for myself? And am I really honoring my, my truest self? Because as an Aquarius, I feel like all the Aquariuses that I've like read for, it has been difficult for them to really lean into their most unique self, especially if you're a younger Aquarius. Um, and you're going to start to realize, okay, what really lights me up? And what communities, what causes, what issues do I really, really care for? And how can I spend more of my time uh, and my resources devoted in like lifting up other voices or helping with like environmental concerns, or uh, maybe it's uh, like a local animal shelter, whatever that you really, really care about. So with my moon in Aquarius's, my Aquarius moons, you are going to be invited to have more understanding of your emotional world. And yes, you're always going to be thinking a lot, but also how do you marry, how do you combine the thinking and the feeling, kind of being more in your body, as well as understanding your boundaries, what your inner child needs, and really finding time to be alone and to be surrounded by the right people who also are dreaming big and are not superficial. Like Aquariuses, they are not surface level people. They are deep thinkers. They have big dreams. They really want to transform the world. They're rule breakers. They're rebellious. This is the time of rebellion. Now for my rising Aquariuses or Aquarians rather, um, your world is going to be changed in terms of how others see you, how you see the world and how you want to show up. So your job can change in terms of the roles, the industries that you're in. You might really start to feel like that like kind of initial feeling of like, maybe there's something else for me. I really want to explore something different. Maybe who I've been sharing with others is really not the only part of myself I want to share. I want to share some different parts of myself. Like really your world is starting to shift and change and and you're realizing that you might need to show up in a different way or be or present yourself in a different way in order to achieve all of your dreams. Now, my North Node in Aquarius, friends, your purpose, your life lessons are going to be really activated. To shift from the individual to the collective and you understanding how to use your gifts, how to use your enthusiasm, um, your just very charismatic, magnetic part of yourself to benefit the people around you, the communities that you care for, and really, really listening to your intuition, your inner voice, and that you might be doing something completely different from everyone else, and that's okay. All of my Aquarius friends, all my friends who have Aquarius and 11s showing up more than three times in their chart, that means that one of your big lessons the next 20 years is going to be understanding that don't don't look at anyone else. Don't look at what anyone else is doing. Focus on you. Focus on your unique vision and how you see the world. There might be a technology product that you want to create, um, issues and causes you really want to devote your time to, nonprofits you want to start, um, or you really want to be spearheading a lot of change and transformation, inclusion and equity in your organization. So lots is going to be happening in the next 20 years. And I want you to look at your free career astrology report, or if you have your birth chart from another source so that you can see, okay, where does Aquarius show up in my chart and which of my planets are in Aquarius so that you can understand what are some of the changes that you're going to start feeling right now at the start of the year? Like you may have made plans at the end of 2023 being like, okay, this is what I want to do. But if you have a lot of Aquarius in your chart, 
things might be turning upside down because you're like, you know, this was my dream, but now I think my dream is something else. And I want you to take time to really process that grief, let go of what you thought you wanted to make room for what's to come. All right. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Let me know what you think. You know how to find me. And I also will have a bonus episode coming up this Thursday around epigenetics, my work with Dr. Laura, who's one of the founders of Body Intuitive. I've been working with her this past year. It's been very transformative in healing a lot of like anxieties and um, different like ailments, like physical ailments that I've had. And I just can't wait to share the interview that I did with her. We do a mini session uh, as well. So you'll get to experience what it's like to work with her uh, in a group setting, in a group capacity. And yeah, can't wait for you to experience it.